Hey guys, so I'm just going to film a little video about a question that was emailed to me um, from a lovely girl who's 16 years old from Nottingham and I'll keep her anonymous just for the sake of this video. I've had a few questions emailed to me since I made the how I got into med school video. Um, I'd probably say I'm getting one or two questions a day about it so I thought I would answer a few of the main questions in video form so that you guys can watch them and hopefully it will answer your questions. So I've just finished my shift on the ward. My hair, again, is doing this crazy frizzy thing. So if any of you can recommend any products that I can use to stop it going crazy like this, I would be most grateful. So in the email that I got, the girl is 16 years old. She's from Nottingham and she says she watched my how I got into medical school video and wondered if I can go into more detail about my experience. She shadowed the orthopedics and she loved it. So for those of you that don't know, orthopedics is kind of anything to do with the limbs and the back, so broken bones, muscle problems, that sort of thing. She loved interacting with the patients and seeing the day in the life of doctors. And afterwards she realized she was sure that that's what she wanted to do with her life. She's wondering what further experience to gain as she's desperate to get back into action and she wants to know, did I do any further work experience in years 11, 12 and 13 when I was at school? So as she's 16, she's awaiting her GCSE results, so good luck for those, all of you who are waiting for them. And she asks what A-level grades I received and in which subjects. So in terms of my A-levels, I did biology, chemistry, drama and general studies. So drama was kind of my fun subject, I really loved it, I really enjoyed it at GCSE and I got an A in drama, I got a B in biology <laughs> and I got a C in chemistry and I got an A in general studies, so I got A, A, B, C. I mean those aren't bad A levels but for someone who wants to get into medicine you can't get into medicine first time around with those sort of grades, um, especially not at the universities that I looked at. I'm not sure if there's any exceptions to those. You guys might know more about, more about it than me. As you've seen in my previous video, by the point that I was actually getting my A-level results, I'd already given up on the idea of doing medicine and it wasn't really in my radar anyway. I hope that answers your question. Those are the grades that I got. So in terms of entry requirements for medical school, Nottingham asks for AAA and that is to include chemistry and biology and at least one other subject except for general studies. For GCSEs, um, at least six at grade A including chemistry, biology and physics or double science and they want you to have at least a B in English and maths. So uh, let's just switch hands there, my arm's aching. <laughs> so in terms of um, GCSEs, I did quite well at GCSE, I think I got four A stars, six A's and two B's. My GCSEs were kind of on the right track to get into medicine, um, but I just slipped in my A levels. The other entry requirement to get into medicine at Nottingham, um, as an undergraduate, so if you're going um, as your first degree, is the UK CAT, which is an entry test. Uh, the graduate entry course don't ask for the UK CAT, they ask for a different entry um, entry exam called the GAMSAT which I'm going to go into more detail about in another video. I didn't sit the UK CAT so I don't really know much about it um, but I'm sure there's lots of other videos out there that you can watch to get more information about that. So. The other question she asks is about the experience that I had. So in my first video I talked about the work experience I did at the hospital and also the um, doctor's surgery around the corner from me. So in terms of getting more experience in years 11, 12 and 13, um, I did some volunteering. Our school had a programme where um, everyone had to do, I think it was like, I think we had to do one hour's volunteering a week 
during sixth form, something like that. So um, me and a couple of friends went to a local residential home. But we used to go and see this really cute little old lady called Edna once a week, have a chat with her, have a cup of tea, and that was my sort of voluntary experience. But in terms of actual medical experience, I didn't get any more in years 11, 12 and 13. I did go and become a healthcare assistant during my first degree. I did that part time at the weekends and that was really great experience. And I also did some other voluntary work, um, again seeing an elderly lady in her own home um, up in Sheffield when I was in my first degree. I would say by all means go and get more experience if you want to in your school holidays or at the weekends and things or go and do some volunteering or um, get some more shadowing experience on the wards or at a doctor's surgery. However, I wouldn't say it's 100% necessary. I do think it would make you um, stand out from the other applicants and it would be something great to talk about if you got an interview. However, I think it's really important to make sure that you enjoy your free time and try your best to get good grades if medicine is something that you really want to focus on. Because although getting more experience will enhance your application, it's not the be all and end all of everything. So I don't know if that answers your question. I hope I've given you a bit more information. Leave me a question in the comments. If you've got any further questions you want to ask me, that's fine. I will be doing more of these Q&A videos. Um, I love hearing from you guys, so keep in touch, keep asking questions, comment down below what your plans are, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. Have a look at my other videos in this um, that I've done in this kind of medical series and give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. See you next time.